Today we are going to discuss ACME for step 1 and step 2 USMLE. It is a very important topic in dermatology and the factors contributing to acne vulgaris are increased sebum production, follicular hyperkeratinization, and also bacterial colonization by organism propionobacter rerium acne. So these three are the main factors. In step 2 CK, the important thing is to know about the treatment. So this chart will help you answer all the important questions. For mild and moderate acne, we give topical treatment. And for like a topical treatment, the first line is benzoyl peroxide, then retinoid, and then antibiotics. Antibiotics are from a tetracycline group that is clindamycin and erythromycin. Then for severe acne that includes scar, pustule, and nodule, we give oral treatment. And in oral treatment, we start from antibiotics. For topical, we end with antibiotics and in oral, we start with antibiotics. And then retinoid is the last reserve. So if you are given a question that a person is on retinoids and benzoyl peroxide and still he is having some acne, what is the best next step? All we have to choose clindamycin. Similarly, if a patient is on oral antibiotics and still no effect, what we have to give? Retinoids. So the side effects of main anti-acne drugs is uh, like benzoyl peroxide and tetracycline is photosensitivity. Other side effects of uh, benzoyl peroxide are uh, irritation, contact dermatitis, dryness, erythema, pleaning, and stinging. All those irritation side effects you don't need to remember. Now, the first type of acne is a comedomal acne. Comedome are a uh, blackhead in general term. They can be closed, they can also be whiteheads, closed or open, depend on the oxidization and um, mostly present on the forehead, nose and chin. They even can progress to severe forms like inflammatory pustules or nodules. So this is the simplest form of acne and for this we need the simplest form of treatment. That was benzoyl peroxide or other organic acid like salicylic, azelic or glycolic acid and the second is topical retinoid. So we give topical treatment the first two in the ladder of acne treatment then inflammatory acne inflammatory acne is the second worst type of acne it has inflamed papules pustules both bees but it is less than 5 ml so we divide it into three mild moderate and severe for mild we give the same as comedomal acne that is topical retinoids and benzoyl peroxide for moderate, we will add another topical agent. Climbing up the ladder chain, that is topical antibiotics, erythromycin and clindamycin. And for severe, we add oral antibiotics. Then nodular or cystic acne. Nodular or cystic acne is large acne that is greater than 5 mm nodules that can appear cystic. Nodules can even merge to form sinus tracts with possible scarring. The treatment for moderate acne, it is not mild, it is severe, we know that. So we will, for moderate, we give all the three topical agents that, that we know of. And for severe, we will add oral antibiotics. And for unresponsive cases, we will add oral isotretinoin. For giving oral isotretinoin, the patient should be uh, confirmed that the patient is not pregnant and also should be on two forms of contraceptives. Then two important topics in step 2 CK are drug induced acne, which is steroid induced acne. Any drug, uh, all the steroids like leukocorticoids and androgens and some drugs like immunomodulators, anticonvulsants, antipsychotics and anti-TB can lead to acne. And this type of acne is always PP, that is papules and pustules. Always remember, it is PP, never comedones, cysts or nodules are not there. Uh, location and age of onset may be atypical for the acne. And for treatment, obviously we have to discontinue the agent and uh, the standard acne therapy. 
Now, chlor acne is a skin disorder or skin acne caused by halogenated hydrocarbons. It is also a type of uh, substance induced acne, mostly due to occupational exposure to pollutant dioxin. It is, con uh, uh, it is characterized by nodules, comedones, which were not present in drug induced acne and it is present on areas which are easily exposed like head, neck and axilla. Now acne rosacea. Acne rosacea is not a type of acne and it is present in fair skinned individuals greater than 30 usually. Etiology is unknown. It is mainly an inflammatory response to any external factor like radiate UV light a microorganism, vasomotor dysfunction or other triggers like hot rings, heat, emotion changes, temperature changes. So acne rosacea is basically redness, redness of the face. Uh, first we have different type of uh, erythema like erythematogelangiectic erythematogelangiectic rosacea as we can make it from the name red and many blood vessels. So because of that, it will be telangiectasia, many blood vessels and persistent facial erythema and flushing. Papular pustules include papules and pustules on the central face. There is also a type of rosacea called ocular rosacea, which will involve the eyes. So in eyes, we will have conjunctival hyperemia and also the surrounding lid margin telangiectasia. Treatment obviously includes avoidance of the triggers like alcohols and spicy foods, which can make you right. Avoid alcohol, spicy food, protect against the skin, use gentle cleansers and use a topical antibiotic like metronidazole for papillopustular pustular variant only. And we can sometimes use like uh, for erythematogenic we can use vasoconstrictive agents like uh, brimonidine, which is alpha 2 A2 agonist, and laser. Uh, in initially, the symptoms are like intermittent, but they can be permanent after some time, and you can have a permanent flushed skin because of the rosacea. This is an example of a papillopustular type. We can see many pustules. This is a rhizomotodial injectic type. We can see redness and these spots due to the new blood vessels. And it, this involves nose and the medial cheek, cheeks, as we can see, also the nasal labial fold. Edema, roughness, and scaling of the tissue is there, and this there is a burning discomfort. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe for more such videos.